So we wanted to create this experience of being able to buy or sell a used car from your home with just some few simple clicks. There's no risk and no hassle involved, and once you sign up for the service, you know that we will do all the work. Now, we had a very clear vision about this experience we wanted to create, but we also had to build a service that would be able to deliver this experience. Some of you might be familiar with similar type of services in other countries, such as BP in the States and CarSpring in the UK. And of course, we have been inspired by these services, but we can't just copy them because the conditions for uh, how cars are bought and sold in Norway is very different, the culture and the legislation. So we had to make sure that we made something that would fit the Norwegian market. We needed to go back to our ecosystem map and analyze and look for strategic partnerships, business opportunities, beneficial integrations, and so on. We developed this service blueprint uh, on a magnetic board with seller's experience here in the front stage and also the buyer's experience as a front stage process. Our service is a bit special because the buyer and seller actually never meet and they don't interact with each other, but the journeys are still very interconnected and therefore we chose to have both of them in the same service blueprint. In the middle here are the backstage processes, everything we needed to do our, at our, our end to deliver this experience. This became a very efficient way of working because as we were doing new analysis and learned new stuff, we could very easily update uh, the, the board by just moving the magnets around. Uh, our service is very smooth and simple in the front, but all the complexity is moved back to the backstage. So this really made it hard to craft the backstage processes, and we had a lot of discussions about how to structure these processes. And at one stage, we just lost track of what was that we really agreed upon the last time we discussed this. What did we conclude? So the magnetic board became very useful because we always updated it when we were having discussions. And then we had a visual, um, visual represent representation of the status quo at every time. Now, we knew that the ideal service is uh, very ambitious and that we won't be able to launch it in quite some while. But we also developed a service blueprint for a minimal viable product that we will be able to bring to the market much quicker. We still want the same hassle-free and smooth experience, but we made some few simplifications. For example, instead of having digital contracts, we would bring paper contracts to the buyer and the seller, since we are visiting them anyway. And instead of providing a price quote online, we would ask sellers to book initial home inspection to get the first uh, price estimate. Also, buyers won't be able to get a car loan on the spot, but they would have to first have the car loan sorted out before starting to use the service. Also, in the backstage here, a lot of the processes will be much more manual. But this doesn't really matter because backstage processes aren't visible for the users anyway. So this won't impact the experience. And based on this analysis, our developers defined the first technical components that they needed to build. Everyone in the team took part in setting up the service blueprints the developers, the project manager, me as a designer, the business analysis, everyone. And this became a tool for collaboration for us. This is how we structured our work and aligned our processes. We had a very strong vision and we knew which experience we wanted to deliver, but we also had to make sure that this is really what people want. And usually, feedback is sought through interviews, but there can be a huge difference between what people say they want and what they eventually will be willing to pay for. 
and this is especially true when you're aiming to make something disruptive, because it's very hard to give feedback when you don't have something similar to relate to. Therefore, we decided to run some experiments. We made a very simple web page, and based on that web page, we could quickly do six experiments. For each experiment, we changed some of the service elements or the pricing. And for each experiment, we sent out 200 email invitations to sellers who already had an ad out uh, on Finn for their car. Each experiment lasted for about one week. And after every experiment, we submitted follow-up surveys. This is the web page we built. It's made really quickly with very limited resources. We didn't even have a graphical designer, but this doesn't matter at this stage. We had some few points explaining how the service works. Each of them can be expanded for more details. And at the end here, we ask sellers to sign up for the initial home visit. To do the experiments in a structured way, we follow some basic principles. We always started with testing the most crucial assumption, the assumption that would matter the most for our success. So in our case, it was whether sellers would be willing to pay for the service, the minimum rate that we could charge without taking a loss. And then we continued to the second most crucial assumption, and so on. For every experiment, we made sure to formulate a clear hypothesis so that everyone would agree about what are we really testing here. And we also made sure never to make more than one change per experiment, even though it was very tempting at times. But if you make more than one change, you can't really know what led to the impact. We also didn't just want to see if people were clicking the red button, because you can press a button just out of curiosity. Rather, we wanted to know that they were likely to have a real buying intent. And we did so by asking them to invest a bit of time. We asked for their registration number and mileage. We asked for their name and contact information. And first, after this, we told them in a very apologetic way that this is just an experiment that we have to do in order to design the best possible service. So what did we learn from this? We started by asking for 7% of the car value for using this service. And this gave us a conversion rate for no, of 19%. For us, there's a huge risk to say that we will buy the car for the exact same price if it's not sold within 30 days. So we wanted to see if we could reduce this uh, risk somewhat by expanding the time frame to 60 days. And as you can see, we got a conversion rate of 18%, so almost the same. It can be quite expensive to transport cars, and it requires quite a lot of logistics. So we wanted to investigate if this really mattered that much to the sellers. And when we asked sellers to transport the cars themselves, we got a conversion rate of 20%. So it wasn't as important as we thought. We tested if we could charge 12% of the car value, but then the conversion rate dropped to 13%. It's kind of hard to sell cars without allowing buyers to see the car and test drive it first. So we asked sellers if they were willing to facilitate test drives, but this lowered our conversion rate to 11%. And it's not really surprising, because also when we were doing our surveys, we learned that sellers associate a lot of stress with having to meet strangers and let, allow them to test drive the car. In Norway, we're not, we're not that eager about having to interact with strangers, so this might be very specific to the Norwegian market. Um, we also investigated if we could get away with a money-back guarantee instead of a sales guarantee, that we would give back 
whatever you had paid for the service, instead of saying that we will buy the car from you. But as you can see, this gave us a conversion rate of only 1%. So, what did we learn from this? We learned that the single most important thing for the seller is that they know what they will get for their car, no matter if it's sold within 30 or 60 days, to have the certainty. So far, we've only done experiments with sellers. If we were to continue the project, we would also have to run experiments with buyers and also investigate if pe people are willing to buy a car unseen, given that they have a detailed inspection report, a 14-day trial period, and a two-year warranty. We also have to see if we can in initially start with a limited number of car models, because it's easier, and also if we can launch in just some few parts of Norway first. And then we have some work remaining with uh, finalizing the partnerships. <clears throat>